What's up? Welcome back to another video here on the FanTC YouTube page. 45 days of mock drafts. We got day number five here for you. We're going to keep things pretty normal. Uh, we obviously had some big NFL news that I'll kind of start off with with a little thought, and then uh, we'll, we'll build our roster here. So if you've watched the first four, I think I've drafted Traylon Burks in just about every single one of them. Uh, Traylon Burks has been a huge target for me in all of my underdog drafts that I've done as well, both on the channel and just slow drafts that I've done on my own. And uh, yeah, the DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins news, it seemed like he was pretty much going there. I never really thought that New England made a lot of sense for him, you know, reuniting with Bill O'Brien. They obviously have such a strong culture and he's kind of not a practice player, according to reports, yada, yada, yada. So I never really thought New England was in the picture. I didn't really think he was going to settle on Tennessee. I thought that he would make the smarter route and go for either a Chiefs or Bills situation where he could compete in the playoffs and try and just make more out of his career than I, I think he has up until this point. I mean, obviously he's a phenomenal wide receiver. Uh, I would say at his peak was one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. So not saying that he hasn't done a lot, but you know, his postseason success is basically zero. I mean, he obviously got there with the Cardinals two years ago. Uh, probably got there with Houston or time or two, maybe as one, one playoff win on his entire resume. So I was hoping D Hop would do that. Obviously, I, I'm a little bit more down on that move just because it also messes up my Traylon Burke stock. So as far as I see it right now, I mean, Ryan Tannehill, I don't know if he's ever had a number two wide receiver that's been fantasy relevant. So that's kind of something that I'll have to do a little bit of research on and kind of reassess what I've been thinking about Traylon Burks this year. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that D-Hop's going to be the number one, at least this year. Maybe if he shows signs of age, Burks can kind of break out towards the end. But that full year two Traylon Burks breakout that I was ready for this year, to say the least, is uh, looking a little eerie as we see here today. So those are kind of my couple thoughts on it. You know, I Nick and I text about it. He said the only thing he likes about it is that he's not on the Chiefs, of course, because he's a Broncos homer. So... That's it is what it is. Uh, let's jump in here to the draft. We're doing a 12 team half PPR, pretty standard roster here. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, two flex, five bench. Uh, we're going to be drafting out of the eighth spot. Now, again, if you've watched the other videos or have talked about or listened to our podcast, I love one through seven. When I'm in the one through seven, I know I'm going to get one of those top seven players that always are in that category. So that is where I prefer to be once I get out of eight. Like I think eight, nine is kind of the weird drafting spot right now. So we're going to try that out. We're going to see what kind of team we can build from the eight spot here. Let's go ahead and get it started. So I believe that is every single one of the seven. So this is, I would say this is, if I was making one of the dumb TikTok videos that say this is how your first round should go, those seven guys in whatever order you think they should go in should be the first seven that get drafted. That leaves this eight spot a little bit tricky. You know, if Eckler doesn't get drafted, if for some reason Tyreek or Cooper Cup or Travis Kelsey even falls, I feel fine taking them here. Now here at the 1.8, it's a little bit tricky. You know, do I take the shot on Bijan? I'm not super high on him. I think he's going to be fine in the NFL I just don't really want to have a rookie running back on a weak team. It's just I don't think that's how I don't think that's going to be building fantasy success. I think if you're the team that the kind of team that's drafting Bijan in the first round of your draft, I'm probably gonna that's gonna be the team I'm gonna go try and trade for, trade with, and try and get Bijan later on in the season when they're you know when their records in the dumps. So and he's finally starting to break out. Um. So let's see, we're going to have eight picks in between my next pick. So, you know, betting on who's going to fall is extremely difficult. Um, if this was a three wide receiver, I probably am just taking one of the top wide receivers left, whether you think that's A.J. Brown, Stefan Diggs. I'm probably going to go C.D. Lamb above those two in my rankings this year. I think both these guys are great. I just think C.D. may have, a, you know, a top – two wide receiver season maybe this year. I think that this is going to be his just insane year. Obviously, last year was kind of the start of that. Um, but when I'm looking at who's not most likely going to come back to me, the biggest name that sticks out is Nick Chubb at the running back position. I think Saquon's great. I think Barkley <laughs> – I think Saquon's great. I think Jonathan Taylor can be really good. Not too high on Jonathan Taylor with their offense being a little shaky. But Nick Chubb, I think, is 
a prime fantasy asset. I think, in all honesty, if you are in a half PPR or less scoring format, Nick Chubb is the number eight on my board. So I, I love that I'm able to get him there. I mean, wow, CD. I mean, you can see take Chubb. It kind of forces some running backs to go pretty quick here. Uh, we got CD. We got Devontae. We got Stefan Diggs and A.J. Brown all got drafted. That really just leaves Amon Ra as your elite-level wide receiver, if you want to call it that. Uh, but out of some of the drafts that I've done, I seem to get some good wide receivers coming back to me in the third. I don't think any of them stack up to what Josh Jacobs is as a player. Obviously, there's the chance of the holdout, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to explain that in every single video. Again, when I'm doing these mock drafts, I'm doing these mock drafts around these players playing unless there's some kind of injury or a true hard holdout situation happens. Then we'll adjust our drafting strategy. But right now, if I'm leaving the first two rounds of my draft with Chubb and Jacobs, like now for the running back room, like maybe I'll grab another one if I feel like I get a good value on a guy. Um, like let's say a Ramondre Stevenson somehow fell all the way to me at the third round. Like that's such good value. I think I'd probably just go ahead and take it anyway. But you know, now we don't have to worry. Like we don't have to, we're not going to be at a point in the draft where it's like, okay, we're going to have to bypass better players at other positions because we need to fill a wide a running back role. And I know last year with the, with the wide receivers was crazy, but running backs are going to continue to hold value in fantasy. I don't think there's any question in that. Um, and I've said it multiple times. I have two wide receivers here that I believe kind of break, are breaking my tears. That's DK and Devontae Smith, and I'm going to go ahead and roll with Devontae Smith. I'm going to get the, the back half of that Philadelphia team. DK, I, I think he's great. I think getting him here where team, team, oh, team 10 did at the end of the third is a steal. Keenan Allen being back there as well. Debo off the board, Mixon, Aaron Jones, ETN. Okay. Now we're looking at, we're not going to go Joe Burrow, Justin Fields. Don't think that in the fourth here, I need to pull the trigger on that. Amari Cooper's 100% in consideration. We're not going Hawkinson. I've already told my thoughts on Hawkinson. Uh, D-Hop now gets interesting because now we're looking at the wide receiver one for the Tennessee Titans. Like, you know, if you're going to take someone like an Amari Cooper or Calvin Ridley, like D-Hop now has to 100% be in consideration in that group as well. Whereas before I could kind of ignore him because I didn't know where he was going to go. Uh, but we're going to go Amari Cooper. I think Amari Cooper is still one of those – not top-level talent in the NFL, but he has been that. And he was really good for fantasy last year, and, and I was really down on him and ended up with zero shares of Amari Cooper, which was kind of sad. So we're going to go ahead and take him in this draft and see what our team looks like with him as our wide receiver, too. All right. Swing back to the fifth year. So DJ Moore, Drake London, Terry McLaurin – off the board we see sanders went right after me like he's a guy that if i could get here i probably would have taken miles sanders um we gotta go wide receiver again we're so we're so locked in at the um running back position that i feel like if i could just get three good receivers to kind of funnel through i'd be happy with Justin Herbert's still out there. Okay, we're going to play the ADP game, and I'm going to see what this team looks like if I build it this way. We're going to go ahead and take Justin Herbert, really, in my drafts, because I still want to get a guy that I think is a very high-level talent at the at the running, at the quarterback position. I feel like those kind of guys, a Lawrence or Herbert, Sometimes a burrow will fall a little bit in drafts. I feel like those guys are still so much more valuable than just drafting a Kirk Cousins with your last pick. I'll also do some stats to kind of see how that pans out, you know, stats-wise. But Herbert, I think, can have a top three season, whereas Kirk Cousins never would. So I don't mind taking him in the fifth. And I also got what I wanted by taking him in the fifth. What I was really hoping for was to go ahead and pair him up with Mike Williams. Now, I have not drafted a lot of Mike Williams. I think this is a specific situation where he kind of – this is where he can really help benefit a team. I don't need him for an every week wide receiver start. Uh, if he's in a bad matchup, if there's some injury concerns, like he's not my one or two wide receiver, which is where he's been getting drafted at in the past. 
Now he's in that flex role where I can kind of interchange him out. Maybe someone breaks out. Maybe something happens. You never know with fantasy football. So I'm not relying on Mike Williams, and I like being in that position. Okay. So, again, I mean, tight end now, we're at the point we're good punting on it. You know, we had our we got our early quarterback – not early, I guess, mid-quarterback. I'm okay. None of these tight ends are really going to do too much for me. Uh, again, I'm always happy with just – Keep selecting wide receivers. I think you know multiple of them are going to end up probably breaking out at some point. Again, I've said multiple times I'm pretty content with my running back room, but I saw a video about David Montgomery and how just solid he has been overall for fantasy football. I think if he's been in the league five years, he's finished as the worst finish as an RB two. So he's never completely fallen out. Now, obviously, with Detroit, you got Jameer Gibbs. A lot of people are going to be really high on him. But I feel like, you know, Detroit kind of had two roles last year with Swift and Jamal. And I could just – I could see them kind of going back to a same strategy where Montgomery's kind of like their their big touchdown guy. And you have Jameer Gibbs as the pass-catching threat, you know, maybe – first down, second down, and maybe eventually gets a little bit more of the work. But I think Montgomery could be one of those guys that has an outlier touchdown season this year, similar to Jamal Williams last year. And we're going to go ahead and take that value. That gives, that gives us three pretty strong running backs. It's a little interesting. A lot of people have never really been that high on David Montgomery, so I think it's an easy target for people to just kind of keep picking at. Uh, but again, I just think he's a guy. He seems to find his way on my draft and my fantasy teams quite a bit throughout the years. And if I'm drafting in the seventh round and I can get a guy who could potentially be a starting running back for at least the first two, three, four weeks of the season, and then we'll see as they play out, like it's a valuable flex piece for me. I'm I'm very happy with that. Um, okay, so now here's an interesting part. Do we want to take a potential rookie breakout in Quentin Johnston? Pair him up with this quarterback and Justin Herbert. Obviously, we have Mike Williams. It's a lot of chargers. You're putting yourself in a precarious situation because it's going to be hard for you to ever drop Mike Williams and just let him out there on the waiver wire because someone's going to pick him up. Someone's going to pay some decent fab for him. But if Quentin Johnson has one or two better games, it's going to be hard for you to you know value that spot for Mike Williams on your team even though you know what his potential is. So I think that's just a big headache. I don't really know if I'm going to walk myself right into. Um, we obviously still have all the same tight ends on the board. I'm not really worrying about taking a shot on them. See, and that's also why I'm a little iffy on drafting Mike Williams. Like if we go back here and I go Marquise Brown here, and then I'm taking Quentin Johnson here, probably like that team just a little bit more, if I'm being completely honest. Not really too worried about that. Definitely not worried about that. I don't really love Gabe Davis, but he is the locked-in wide receiver, too, now for that team. And, I mean, he's really just going to be my first bench spot. Huge boomer bust option. At least he does have some NFL reps. I know his body can handle a full season, and I know he's he has big game potential. Let's take Gabe Davis here in the eighth. I was a guy that was completely off of him last year, thank goodness, just based on where he you know performed at. But I do think he is a guy that deserves a little bit more respect this year. I think if you get him in the eighth and you're drafting him as, you know, probably the twenty something, low thirtieth wide receiver off the board, you're getting a value on him. Uh okay. Okay. So Njoku goes off right before us. Luckily, I think I could probably wait till my next pick and get Chigakonquo. So I want Chig now that D hops there. See, that throws off my direct my draft strategy there as well. I think I gotta put Njoku clearly above a Conquil, even though before I was kind of happy with either one that I got, because I see them a little similarly. I've seen Joku a little bit more time in the NFL, a Conquil only a second year tight end. On this front here, which one is a breakout candidate? Juju, don't love Juju with Mac Jones. He wasn't even super good with Patrick Mahomes, so that's a no. Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman are in the kind of a similar category. Which one do you trust? There's a lot of questions up there in Baltimore. But I do think it's worth taking a shot on one of the two because if one if one of them does end up becoming the number one guy up in Baltimore, I think you definitely want to have him on your roster. 
And I think that guy could potentially be Zay Flowers. I think he's the rookie run, rookie wide receiver that I want to add to my fantasy teams this year. All right, we're not going to wait anymore. Obviously, I'm going to have to do a little bit. I kind of talked down Traylon Burks because of Ryan Tannehill's lack of fantasy relevance for you know anyone beyond his number one wide receiver. We'll have to see how much that plays into Chig as well and if that's going to bump him down my rankings. But, you know, I, Dalton Schultz I would consider if, if Chig would have gotten taken, but, like, I'm not that I'm not going to take Kincaid. Komet, Dulcich, Higby, Everett, like, all these guys are your – you have no confidence in them potentially becoming just an every week player for your team. And a con at least somewhat gives me that lead in the draft. So I'm going to go ahead and keep him. Uh, so we got three running backs. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more depth. Deontay Foreman and Roshan Johnson in Chicago, Kendra Miller in New Orleans. I want a guy that I know is going to be able to at least get on the field. And, you know, it's important when you're doing these drafts. Obviously, I mean, I'm trying to make a little bit of a, a splash on YouTube with the draft scene itself. But when you're in these drafts, really, you're trying to play out your first four to six weeks of your season. You know, I, I want players that could potentially – do something for me in these first couple of weeks that either show me something or are going to give me enough confidence cutting him that I don't think it's going to come back and bite me. Kendra Miller, we'll see what his uh, Alvin Kamara suspension is, but if it's only a couple of games, maybe I get two games early in the season where I see something out of Kendra Miller that makes me want to keep him for a little bit longer. You know, it's just I, he's a player that's most likely going to touch the field as long as Kamara still receives some kind of a suspension. So same thing with Sky Moore. I know he's going to be on the field. He's going to be the number two option, wide receiver option for the Chiefs, at least to start week one. So I, I feel fine with that. Last pick here. A lot of my draft is a lot of high upside players, which love drafting that way. Not too much. Not too many limited ceilings. I am not worried about quarterback. I mean, tight end, there's no one here that's interesting me. We have one, two, three. We have five wide receiver, maybe six. Zay Jones, like, Zay Jones, is he going to have fantasy relevant weeks when there's a bipocalypse? Potentially, but not on my team. Michael Gallup, same thing. Nico Collins, all these guys are just all guys you can see on the waiver wire after week one. So I'm going to take a shot. He'll probably be a last-round pick in a lot of my drafts. That's just Van Jefferson. Don't really know what to say too much other than I think that he could be a wide receiver too on what was a very high-powered Rams offense just two years ago. Is he good enough to be super fantasy relevant? We will have to wait and see. But worst-case scenario, he's definitely a guy I feel comfortable with cutting week one if I absolutely needed to. So Justin Herbert leading us at the quarterback position with Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs as our starting running backs. Devontae Smith and Murray Cooper are wide receivers with Chig at the tight end. Our flexes, according to the draft, Mike Williams, David Montgomery. And then we have Dave Davis, Zay Flowers, Kendra Miller, Sky Moore, and Van Jefferson as our wide receiver uh, and, well, I guess, just our bench in general. I said that really weird this time. I don't know why I said it that way. But – Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff for us here at the Fantasy Podcast Network. We will have some more Fantasy Football Podcasts coming out uh, this upcoming week, actually. We'll start breaking in some quarterback rankings, kind of go over a little bit where our discrepancies are. And uh, it's going to be some good videos, some good content, a little bit of arguing. So make sure to tune into those. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, everybody.